Hi there everyone. I hope the weather's good where you are. Here in the UK it looks like summer might finally be starting and I'm looking forward to being able to do a lot more flying with all of my drones. As part of my preparation for this I've been putting together all my filter settings and PID tuning parameters for all of my AOS frames and creating presets so that you guys can try them out either as the basis, a starting point for your tune or just something that you can fire and forget just to know that you're getting a little bit more out of the PID tune than what you'd have with the Betaflight stock settings. In this video, I'm gonna be taking you through where to find these presets, how to apply them to your drone, and some things you should be aware of whenever you're using presets like this. It's a lot to cover in one video, so let's not waste any more time. Let's dive right into it. All right, so the first thing you're gonna to want to do to use these new presets is add a new preset source in Betaflight Configurator. So jump into the presets tab after you've connected to your flight controller and go to this preset sources button. You're gonna to want to add a new source and give it the name, I don't know, AOSRC. The URL is going to be GitHub Chris Rosser firmware presets. And I'll put a link to that down in the video description as well. Once you've added that URL, you should see a GitHub branch field appear and the branch name you're gonna want is AOS-RC. Once you've done that, hit save, and then click make active. Once you've done that, you should just be able to click okay. And if you search for AOS, you should see all of these tunes and filter settings come up. If you're seeing this, that means that you've successfully added the source and we can move on to the next step. These presets cover all of the PID and filter settings that you're gonna need for your AOS frame, but they don't cover all of the different configuration parameters. So before we apply the preset, I'm just gonna run through a few checks that you can do to make sure that your quad is ready to go and ready to be set up with these presets. The first thing we're gonna check is the board alignment. So hold the quad with the nose pointing away from you and in the Setup tab of Configurator, click this Reset Z-axis button, and now the quad should be pointing away from you on the screen. Tilt the nose forward, and the quad should nose forward. Tilt it back, the quad should tilt back. Left, left, right, right. If it doesn't exactly do what you do with the quad in your hand, then there's something wrong with your board alignment, and you can adjust that in the Configuration tab. Often it's your that needs to be adjusted, particularly for 25 millimeter AIOs, which sometimes expect um, the quad to be aligned at 45 degrees to the board. But you can change these values until you get that behavior in the setup tab exactly right. And particularly if you're using one of my Cine frames, so the Cine 2.5 or Cine 3.5, you'll probably need to set the roll degrees to 180 to take into account that you've flipped the flight controller upside down inside the quad because of the design of the frame. Once you've got that board alignment correct and the quad is performing exactly as you expect, when you look at it in the setup tab, you're ready to check your motor configuration. To do that, we're gonna go into the motors tab. We're gonna to want to check that motor direction is reversed and that that's ticked because all of my tunes assume that you're gonna be running props out because props out is just a superior configuration in terms of flight performance to props in. So we're always gonna be running props out, so make sure that's ticked. And then go through the reorder motors and motor direction wizards if you haven't already to make sure that the motors are correct, the order is correct, and also that the rotation direction is correct. Again, just check this diagram, making sure that the motors are spinning in the direction this diagram says, and that motor direction is reversed. The next thing we're gonna check is that bi-directional D-Shot is enabled and working. So to do that, we're gonna turn on bi-directional D-Shot, and then we're gonna look over here to the error rate, and we're gonna plug a battery in and check that that error rate goes to zero. There we go. And that shows that bi-directional D-Shot is working correctly. If for whatever reason it's not for you, then you're going to need to update your ESC firmware most likely, making sure that you're running BlueJ or the latest BL Heli 32, 32.9 or AM32, one of the ESC firmwares that supports bi-directional D-Shot. 
Once your board alignment and motors are configured correctly, applying the tune couldn't be simpler. You just select your frame and have a look through the options. So you can choose to apply the filters automatically when you're applying the tune, and I would recommend that you do this. And you can also look through and choose your RC link because the RC link settings are really important for getting the most out of any PID tune. So you can select whatever RC link you're using, be it the LRS, FreeSky, DJI, or Crossfire. Just pick the one that's, that's most appropriate. Or if one of these doesn't suit what you're trying to do, you can apply another preset separately. So if you're wanting to use a different type of RC link, don't select any of these and go and apply your preset after you've applied the tune and it should work just fine. There are also these options which you can look through, uh, which I would recommend. So battery sag compensation, no stick dead band, to allow the quad to arm at any angle and also props out. So that's recommended. I would run props out on every quad, no matter the size. And so I have this ticked automatically, but you do need to make sure that you check your motor direction because applying a preset like this won't change the motor direction. Um, it'll just tell Betaflight that you're running props out. So you have to make sure that separately you check your motor configuration and that you are running props out. Once you're happy with all of these options, I'm going to pick ELRS because that's what I'm running. Then you can just click pick and save and reboot. And that's going to apply the configuration to the quad. If you're just looking for a preset that you can fire and forget and then go and enjoy flying your AOS frame, then that's all you need to do. If you're looking to get the maximum possible flight performance out of your build, there are a couple of steps that you can take after applying the preset which can make things even better. So the first place we're going to want to go is into the PID tuning tab, and we're going to want to make sure that expert mode is enabled so that we can see the master multiplier slider. Now, I typically have my master multiplier set a little bit higher than what's in the preset. And the reason I've done this is because I want the presets to be safe for the majority of people flying AOS builds. So I've turned the master multiplier down a little bit in all of the presets between 0.1 and 0.25. If you want to get even more flight performance, you can turn the master multiplier up, um, go in steps of 0.05 or 0.1 until you see a nice improvement or until you start hearing rough sounding motors or oscillations. If you start hearing that, you need to turn the master multiplier back down. In general, if you have a very clean build, you should be able to increase the master multiplier a little bit from what's in the preset. If you have a build with a lot of vibration, then you may not be able to increase it and you may in fact need to turn the master multiplier down a little bit. This is why it's really beneficial to have a very clean build, both a low vibration frame and a low vibration build overall, so you can get that master multiplier up as high as you can. Once you have that master multiplier where you want it, just hit save. The next thing we're gonna look at is the RC smoothing. Now we're gonna want RC smoothing on, set points set to auto, and then we're gonna be wanting to look at this auto factor. If you want a really smooth, kind of damped stick response, um, more suitable for cinematic style flying, you're gonna to want to increase it maybe to 60, 90, or even 120. So you might need to increase it quite a lot from the default value of 30. However, if you want a very sharp race-like response, you might find that you can get away with decreasing the auto factor a little bit down to maybe 25, 20, or even 15. It's really up to you and how the quad feels. If you turn the auto factor down too much, you might start hearing you know, little jitters in the motors from uh, not enough smoothing on your RC link. And if you have higher frequency RC link, so you're running 500 or 1000 Hertz Express LRS, you might need to turn up that smoothing as well in order to, to make that work and not get um, jitter getting through to the motors. That's really the second thing that you can tune to make your build feel just exactly as you want it to. I would typically run you know, anywhere from 30 to 60 on my builds. I hope these presets help you get your AOS build flying brilliantly. Whether you're building sub 250 with something like this AOS 3.5, or you're building something a little bigger for more professional work. That's right, there is a preset for the AOS Cine 80, developed with the help of Brian White at PID Toolbox and it is awesome. More info in the video description if you want to learn more about this. 
No matter what you're building, I'd love to hear what you think of these new presets down in the comments. And if you have any suggestions, feedback, or you just want to share a picture of your awesome build on an AOS frame, I'd love it if you'd email me chris at aosrc.com. Honestly, looking at some of the pictures of the builds you guys create is the highlight of my day. So if you have any of those images, I'd love to see them. That's all I have for you for today. So until next time, I wish you all very, very happy flying.